things which I think the challenges they face is that um, many businesses are built on what they consider to be unassailable business models. But what we've seen, uh, certainly in things like financial services, we've seen um, them being challenged by these very small, very niche, very agile new models that come up, um, payday loans and micro loans and mobile banking. Um, and so we've, and we've seen it in retail, clearly. I mean, we've seen the, the, the erosion of um, the, the, the old notion that what you needed for retail was a big distribution center on the motorway, big warehouses, big branches, and lots of stuff at Christmas. And, and of course, the, the whole model has been eroded. So you can, you can look in multiple sectors and see that um, historic business models that supported these giant infrastructures um, are, are collapsing at every stage. I think there's still, funnily enough, great potential in brands. So if we overlay on this, this thing um, issues of trust and integrity, I think that um, people still want to be interacting with businesses and organizations that they trust. And so we may well see a hollowing out of what businesses actually do, but we may still see them being you know, very big because the... Because the fact is, if I want to, uh, to take a mortgage, I want to take it from a, a company that I know. I don't want to take it from a tiny company that I've never heard of that's based 600 miles away on an island. It it's, it's just doesn't feel like a good idea to do that. So um, you've kind of seen that with uh, Amazon and the Amazon marketplace. So I bought uh, my niece's Christmas present from the Amazon marketplace and it didn't turn up. They just didn't send the thing out on time. And Amazon straight away said, well, because we, we didn't fulfill that order ourselves, we can't just send you a new cycle helmet, which is what I bought her. But we can, of course, immediately refund your money and we'll give you free delivery if you now choose something from our sort of core range rather than the marketplace. So they, their customer service was geared up around it. And my trust in the brand isn't dented at all because they, my customer service experience was like dealing with Amazon. Um, but I had the option to get a better price and, and a wider variety of choice from um, sort of trading on their marketplace. And I guess you see that with, thing, with many of the payment processors like PayPal. You know, PayPal gives you the ability to interact with a trusted brand on highly suspect websites, you know, things that you wouldn't... Um, want to give your credit card details to. So when we lay trust over it, I still see that there's a role for, for big organizations. Um, but I do think any organization that believes that just because it used to be big, it's going to continue to be big is, is definitely on rocky ground. And if you, um, one of the, 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 the areas I work in is looking at creativity and innovation and agility and, and looking at how most large organizations um, just incur more and more process and control, which drives out innovation and creativity. It makes them lethargic and not agile. And if you look at mobile phone companies, that's why their true innovation usually comes from acquisition. They, they're, they're sort of institutionally unable to innovate because it just gets too heavy, too weighty and too complex. So I think that's the, the kind of... Um, you know, the kind of key changes I see at the moment.